What's your advice to people who are head over heels in debt? Well, first and foremost, you need to stop doing whatever you did, spending all that money that put you in debt. That's the first thing. Um, yeah, you got to take some accountability and realize it's your fault while you're in debt. And the best piece of advice is, yo, you just got to work your way out of that debt. You got to work overtime. You got to get yourself out of that debt, man. Literally, you gotta work your way out of that hole that you that you put yourself in, man. Nah, nah, nah. Don't don't say that. Don't don't say, oh, you're finished. You're finished, man. But you gotta work your way out of that debt, man. That's why you have to delay gratification, man. Only treat yourself when you've worked hard. And if you don't have the money up front. To pay for these holidays or these cars or these clothes or these watches and that. The fact that you don't have money is synonymous with the fact that you ain't worked hard. Because if you worked hard, you would have the money to pay for it. So if you don't have the money to pay for it, that means you ain't worked hard. So therefore, you don't deserve the treat, big man. Did he actually say that he bought a Stone Island and financing a merch? Oh, I don't know. Say so paying monthly for the stony, fam. Why? <laughs> oh, he's joking. He's joking. Oh, I don't think I can see his DP. Yo, yeah, oh, yeah, I can see the stone island. Yeah, okay, <laughs> fam. Yeah, man. It's just, it's just not worth it, man. It's just not worth it. It's just not worth it, man. The problems that I'm, I'm telling you right now, yeah, there are people right now still feeling the effects of the debts that they accumulated and occurred 10 years ago. It's not a joke. Life, yeah, if you put in the work, can be an upward spiral. You might not have known that, but you, you definitely will find out one day, sooner or later. If you start making bad financial decisions, you're going to be in such a downward spiral, it's going to be fucking crazy. It's like you're, you're living in a nightmare. You're in a permanent nightmare that you never wake up from. I'm in an upward spiral. Life just seems to be getting easier and easier in terms of money. It's like, it's nothing like, I was saying to my girl, yeah, I was like, ah, oh, yeah, once I buy this new house and, that, and I rent out this, this, this house here, within a short period of time, I'll have 30 grand to put down on deposit on a house in, in Harlem. Or somewhere on the outskirts of London and that. Because money's coming fast because obviously I put in the work because life is an upward spiral. And it's the same thing in the, the, the reverse is also true. How many times have you heard people like they got low, they're low on money, they're in their overdraft and that, they got Bailey chasing after them, and then they hear some noise coming from their car and like, oh, that sounds expensive. And it's not even financially viable for them to get rid of the car and that logistically they need the car because although work is only a 30 minute drive away they're driving on a fast road yeah they're on an a10 or a4 6 or whatever fast road and that for them to catch public transport because they can't afford to fix their car that's a two-hour journey my mom's workplace yeah there's a man that lives in like dagenham it takes him two hours to get to my mom's workplace because he don't have a car. Why he don't have a car, I don't fucking know. He needs to get one, mate. But some people live so far away from work that travelling by public transport is not financially or logistically viable. I mean, this guy still does it. What I'm saying is if he was to drive from Dagenham, as long as he left early enough and avoided traffic, he could probably get to my mom's workplace in 30 minutes. Instead, he's doing a two-hour two hour journey. Two-hour journey before and a two-hour journey after a 12-hour shift. So you're spending fucking, what, best part of 16 hours. You're literally just living to work. Now, obviously, at some point in your life, yeah, that's what the reality is going to have to be. Man's done that. I remember working in Croydon, near where the Whitgift um, shopping centre is. They had, like, a Premier Inn that they was uh, building, I think. Uh, was it no, was it a Premier Inn? No, it was next to the Premier Inn. It was, like, a um, flats that they were building next to the Premier Inn. I would drive from my mum's yard in Edmonton to, to Croydon. 
yeah? So Edmonton is at the top of North London. Any more north than Edmonton, you're outside of the North London postcode. And Croydon is at the bottom of South London, yeah? I was driving all the way from Edmonton, <clears throat> in two hours to Croydon, and then I was working a 12-hour shift, and then two hours back to Edmonton. Four hours on the road, 12-hour shift, 16 hours at my mum's yard. All for the sake of just 250 a day, bro. Imagine doing a mad-ass journey for 250 a day. Maybe it was a little bit more, I don't know, but yeah. 